Hey, what's up, YouTube? My name is Nigel Barros, and today I'm going to show you guys my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera Rig. So before we go into rigging this camera out, I just kind of wanted to give you guys some pros and cons of this camera. It's obviously not the best camera for everybody, but it does offer some pretty unique features. So some of the pros are it has raw video recording, really sharp and detailed image quality, ProRes recording, you got four flavors, ProRes HQ, ProRes 422, ProRes LT, and ProRes Proxy. Some other cool features is that it has focus peaking and zebras, so you can get great critical focus and correct exposure. It also has all the ports you need, a blank port for off-camera triggering, start and stop, a mic jack, a headphone jack, which is awesome because you not only can monitor with your headphones, but there's also on-screen audio meters. It also has a mini HDMI port and a power port for external power. Some of the cons of this camera is that it has a small sensor, it's Super 16, so it's going to be not as good in low light, you're not going to get as wide of an image because you have about a 2.88 crop factor, and it's going to be a little bit harder to get that shallow depth of field that most filmmakers really want. The camera also has a very low quality matte finish screen, so it's really hard to see in sunny conditions and it's really not that high resolution. The audio preamps inside of the camera are very, very poor. The battery life is probably one of the weakest points of this camera. You only get about 20 minutes out of the Nikon style small batteries. So the idea behind rigging this camera out is to fix most of those problems, but also keep the rig as small as possible and not have to resort to things like 50 millimeter rods. So if you're wondering, this camera is definitely not the cheapest camera out there. It runs for about $1,000 new, but if you look around, you can get it for around $650 to $700. I actually got mine during a B&H sale, and these little guys were only going for $500 during that time. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the Camtree Hunt Cage. This definitely isn't the most inexpensive cage you can get for this camera. There are a lot of other options for around $60 to $100. Bucks. This one costs you about $180. But it gives you a lot of different accessories, and once the camera is mounted inside of it, you have a lot more mounting points as well as that cool top handle. So next let's talk about battery life. The battery life, as I said, on the Blackmagic Pocket is very, very poor. So you could go the route of getting some cheap eBay 12 volt batteries and finding some way to hook it up and rig it out with those. But those are actually a little bit too big and bulky and they're not the best option for powering this camera. What I decided to go with was the Sony MPF battery adapter that you can use the Sony MPF batteries and it'll power the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera for about an hour and a half to two hours per battery. This is a really great option and only costs about 50 bucks. The batteries are about $20 for two. I got the knockoff brands. It's a really great option and you can mount it onto your rig without having to use 50 millimeter rods. Where I decided to place it on my rig was the perfect spot because it didn't obstruct anything and I could still grip the top of the handle without it being too annoying. And that brings me to the viewfinder. There are only really three options for viewfinders out there. There's the Zacuto, the Kinotechnik, and the Camerar. I decided to go with the Zacuto because of the anti-fog technology. Plus the Zacuto has a mounting frame that really connects the viewfinder onto the camera really solidly. And as you can see, the battery plate doesn't obstruct the viewfinder at all. So now let's talk about lenses. The cool thing about having a Micro Four Thirds mirrorless mount is that you can pretty much put any lens onto it, especially the old vintage lenses that are really, really cheap these days. But instead of going the super cheap route and getting some old lenses with a dummy adapter, I decided to go with the Metabones Speed Booster that's specifically made for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. This is the Nikon F mount, and what it does is increase your field of view. So instead of being 2.88 crop, it's a 1.71 crop, which is much closer to a Super 35 millimeter sensor. And it also increases your f-stop by, I think, one stop. So it obviously gives you a wider field of view and a shallower depth of field. So now let's talk about the lens that I use the most. I was looking around for some old vintage lenses that were still pretty sharp and had a low aperture and I came across this Tokina 24-40 f2.8 lens that was for the Nikon F mount and I went ahead and picked it up for about a hundred bucks. It has really solid build quality with smooth zoom and focus rings. It's a constant aperture of f2.8 and although it's old it is still a pretty sharp lens. So the last thing we'll talk about is audio. I really didn't want to have to put my mic on top of the top handle, and so I added an Alzo cold shoe adapter to the right hand side of my hand grip, and that would just allow me to put a mic on the right hand side of my rig so that the rig wouldn't be so tall, and I also just prefer having my mic on the right hand side of my rig anyways. The mic that I use the most with this rig is my Sennheiser MKE 400. It's a pretty old mic, but it's made by Sennheiser, so it's really, really robust, and it's a directional mic, so it's a lot better for run-and-gun interview type stuff if I need it. 
And since this camera has a headphone jack, I do use a pair of headphones by Sennheiser as well. These are the PX100 Mark IIs, and they're great headphones for monitoring audio when you're in run and gun type situations. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. That's my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera rig. And as you can see, I fixed most of the problems that we had here. The small sensor size, deep depth of field, and narrow field of view were fixed by the Metabone Speed Booster. The poor battery life was fixed by the Sony MPF battery adapter. The screen couldn't really be fixed, but it's a lot easier to see now and get my focus with the Zakudo Z Finder. The really bad internal audio was fixed by the Sennheiser MKE400. Although you still do get hits with this mic, I use it mostly for ambience or scratch audio when I'm doing dual system sound. And the kind of awkward small form factor was fixed by the Camtree Hunt Cage. But as you can see, I didn't have to use any 50mm rods to attach batteries to or to support a lens that was way too big because the Tokina 24-70 is still a pretty compact lens for this camera and I think it's a really great fit. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed that video, please subscribe and hit the like button. That would really help me out a lot. And I will see you guys next time. Later.